Welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. I'm Noah and today we'll learn how to make a wall jump and wall sliding mechanic using Unity and C Sharp. It's an easy, straightforward and fun method. But before we dive into that, this video is sponsored by Core. Core is the new free game creation platform that lets you build, publish, and play games. Core makes prototyping and iteration fast, so it's a great platform for game jams, for example, especially if you want to quickly set up a 3D multiplayer game. You can get started making games right away using thousands of free, high-quality music, sound, and art assets, with no coding required. But if you like to get more nerdy with it, Core still lets you create your own game logic in Lua and build your own levels and art with their easy-to-use tools. You can build games from scratch or remix and reimagine content shared by other creators. And when you're ready to publish, your game will go live instantly on the Core platform with the click of a button. And the IGDA Core Summer Jam with $3,000 in prizes just starts. So be sure to check out Core by clicking on the link in the description. With that said, let's head into Unity and have a look at what we have set up. We have this simple environment, each platform and pillar has a 2D box collider and a ground layer. The player character also has a 2D box collider, as well as a 2D rigid body and a player script. I explain in detail how to make this simple player controller in this video, but here's also a quick look at it right now. Just to be clear, this is the basic platformer controller without the wall jumping or wall sliding. It only allows the player to move left and right and jump. So just skip a little bit ahead if you're only interested in wall jumping and sliding. This float input variable detects whether or not the player is pressing the left or right arrow keys. If he's pressing the right arrow key, for example, input will be equal to 1, and if he's pressing the left, it will be equal to minus 1. It will be equal to a big fat 0 if he's pressing neither. Then we use this input variable to move the player left or right, in other words, along the x-axis. For the player's jump, we can head down here. You'll see this line of code detects whether the player is standing on the ground or not by casting a small invisible circle by his feet, which will return true if he is standing on something with the ground layer, and false if he isn't, which is why the platforms and pillars have that ground layer. Then if a player presses the jump key, which in my case is the up arrow, and he's on the ground, then we run this little line of code to have him jumping into the air. Lastly, these if statements and small function get the player flipping to look in the direction he's moving. So that's a quick summary of what's going on. You can of course copy all this or check out the video linked in the description for much more in-depth explanations of how all this works. Of course, the main topic of this video is to wall jump and wall slide, so I'll pass the mic to my brother Liam so you can learn how to do so. Let's now go ahead and open up our player scripts. First of all, let's make the wall sliding working. So basically, when we're on our wall and we're moving in towards it at the same time, then we want the player to slide down the wall at a certain speed that we want to be able to control. So let's create a bool variable called isTouchingFront. This variable is going to act in the exact same way as the isGrounded variable, but it will check if we're touching something with the ground layer in front of us this time. Then we'll make a public transform variable called front check. This variable will be used to know the position at which we'll cast our invisible detection circle from. Then let's create a bool variable called wall sliding so that we can keep track if the player is currently sliding on a wall or not. And lastly, we'll make a public float variable called wall sliding speed, which will of course control the speed at which our character will slide down from walls. Inside of the update function, we'll set the isTouchingFront variable to be equal to physics2d.overlapCircle. And we'll cast our circle from our front check dot position with a size of check radius, and we only want to detect objects that have the ground layer on them, and so we'll use the what is ground layer mask. Alright, so if isTouchingFront equals equals true, and if we're not on the ground, so if isGrounded equals equals false, and if input is not equal to zero, in other words, if we are moving into the wall with our arrow key, then we want to wall slide, and so we'll set our wall sliding bool variable to be equal to true. 
else we'll just set it to false. Now let's make the actual wall sliding work. So I'll create a if statement and check if wall sliding equals equals true. If this is the case, then we want to modify our rb.velocity. We will set it equal to a new vector 2. We don't want to modify the velocity on the x axis, so I'll just set it to rb.velocity.x. For the velocity on the y axis, we will not just set it directly to our wall sliding speed, because when we will be doing our wall jumping, for example, we will be modifying the velocity on the y axis as well, and so it will interfere. Instead, we'll use the mathf.clamp function. This function takes in three parameters. The first one is the actual value that we want to clamp, so I'll put in rb.velocity.y, and we want to constrain this value between our wall sliding speed and float.max value. So basically, our velocity on the y-axis can be as big as it wants because we're using float.max value, but it cannot go below our wall sliding speed value. Of course, we'll say negative wall sliding speed since we want the character to fall down. So normally, if we didn't add this line and we jumped onto the wall, the character would just fall back down at the usual speed due to gravity. But because we're constraining the rb.velocity.y so that it cannot go under negative wall sliding speed, it will make the character fall down slower and give the impression that he is sliding on the wall. Okay, let's now save the script and go back to Unity. In here, we will first of all create a new empty game object that I will call front check. Don't forget to parent this object to the player so that it moves with him. Then let's select our player and drag and drop that game object onto the front check slot. And I'll set my wall sliding speed to 5. Pressing play, you'll see that when we jump next to our wall and move in towards it at the same time, the player's fall slows down beautifully. Okay, let's now go back to our script and make the wall jumping work. So I'll start off by making a bunch of variables. I'll create a bool variable called wall jumping that will keep track if we're currently wall jumping or not. Then I'll make a public float variable for the x wall force, in other words, how much velocity are we going to want to apply to our character on the x-axis when he wall jumps. Then we'll make a public float variable called y wall force that will control the velocity on the y-axis when he wall jumps. And finally, we will make a public float variable called wall jump time that will let us control for how long the x and y wall forces will get applied for. So we basically want to wall jump when we are sliding on our walls and we press on the up arrow key. So I'll create a if statement and I'll check if inputs.getKeyDown keycode.up arrow and wall sliding equals equals true. If those two conditions are met, then we want to set wall jumping to true. Now we need to set wall jumping back to false once the wall jump time has passed. To achieve this, we'll simply create a little void function called set wall jumping to false. And inside of it, we'll just set our wall jumping rule to false. Then right after we set it equal to true here, we'll use the invoke function. This function takes in two arguments, the name of the function that we want to run, so I'll pass in the string set wall jumping to false, and the second parameter is after how much time do we want to call this function, and so we will of course use our wall jump time variable. Alright, now let's actually make our character wall jump. So I'll create an if statement checking if wall jumping equals equals true. If this is the case, then we want to modify our rb.velocity. We will set it equal to a new vector 2. For the velocity on the x axis, we will use our x wall force variable, and we will multiply it with negative inputs. So basically, if we're jumping on a wall that is on our right, we'll have the right arrow key pressed down, and so we want to wall jump to the opposite direction, so to the left. Likewise, if we're on a wall that is on our left, we'll have the left arrow key pressed, and so we want to wall jump to the right. That is why we're taking the opposite of our input variable. For the velocity on the y-axis, we'll simply use our y wall force variable. And that is it, everything should now be working perfectly. So let's go ahead and save the script and let's jump back inside of Unity. In here, we just need to set the values for these three variables. Again, choosing the correct values for your variables will take a lot of playtesting as you have to fine tune and try out different combinations until you find something that fits your needs. But for now, I'll choose 0.05 for the wall jump time, 15 for the x wall force and 30 for the y wall force. 
All right, pressing play, you'll see that the wall jumping is working perfectly. We can now move our character around, we can jump between platforms, we can jump on walls and even slide on them. Controlling our little poor character is starting to really feel nice. Okay, it's Noah again. Hopefully that was helpful. This was just a tiny part of a Udemy course my brother and I are making about creating a complete 2D platformer game in Unity. We'll of course let you know when it's complete. With that said, thanks a ton to Blankton Prod patrons for supporting this game creation channel financially every month. And also, don't forget to check out the sponsor of this video, Core. It's completely free, just visit coregames.com or click the link in the description. Alright, stay tuned for more game dev content, cheers!